Howdy, Tommy from Tank Nations here. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about copepods. I've been getting a lot of customers walking into the shop asking if we sell copepods here or whether they should add a bunch of copepods to their aquarium uh, to get rid of different algaes or detritus or other aquarium keeping woes that they're dealing with. And the answer is probably no to whether you should add a bunch of copepods. And if you want some copepods, I'll just give you some because they're growing in all of our aquariums. But uh, I hope to explain why adding a ton of copepods to your aquarium probably isn't gonna be the end all be all to your success in a very simple ecological way. And hopefully this can inform you if you're considering doing that in the future. Uh, if you like this video, please hit that like button you know, maybe even subscribe, hit the bell. It helps us out a lot. All right, so first things first, copepods are micro crustaceans. You can see them moving along on the glass here and kind of jumping through the water. Copepods will eat algae, detritus, uneaten fish food, fish poop. And as they break that down, they incorporate it into their biomass and they make more copepods. Copepods are often touted as natural foods for your corals, but they can also feed very small fish in your aquarium. In fact, in this tank where we have a few baby mollies, we barely have to feed them. They get almost all the food that they need from what's growing in the tank. So if copepods do all these great things for the tank, then why aren't we just adding more copepods all the time? And the answer to this question is that you already have copepods and you already have these copepods at your aquarium's carrying capacity. This is an ecological term. And basically what it says is that a population is going to reach a certain size based on the available habitat and food and other things that it needs to survive and reproduce and make more of itself. If you feed your fish more, your fish will grow. And in the case of mollies and guppies, they might reproduce and make more of themselves. But if you feed the same amount of food and you add more mollies and guppies to the aquarium, well, now there's less food for everyone to uh, feed upon. And so you're likely gonna end up with less healthy mollies and guppies that are making less babies. So hopefully that makes sense as a general analogy, but to break it down with respect to copepods, by adding more copepods, you're not going to increase a population very likely because you already have copepods. Now the benefit of adding copepods might be to introduce new strains into the aquarium. These new strains might do better than the ones that you have in there already, but adding more of the same copepods over and over again isn't going to help them to reach higher population sizes. There are two things that you can do to naturally increase the copepod populations in your aquarium. So the first thing that you can do is increase the fecundity of your copepods. Fecundity is the amount of and the health of the eggs in a given reproductive cycle. So the way that you increase fecundity in your copepods is by feeding foods that have the right ratio of EPA and DHA. This would be a blend of microalgae that you would dose to your aquarium on close to a daily basis if you could. The second thing that you'll do to increase the amount of copepods in your aquarium is you just provide them with more habitat on which to live and do all the things that copepods like to do. And this can be accomplished with a copepod hotel, which is just a container that you can put in the aquarium and take out periodically to clean. Um, or you can add a refugium. The refugium doesn't have to be upstream, it can be downstream in the sump. The copepods aren't gonna get chopped up by the impeller of your return pump as they make their way back into your display tank. These are two effective ways that you can increase the amount of copepods that are already existing in your aquarium. All right, so what about the people that say, uh, you know, oh, I had terrible diatoms or dinoflagellates in my tank and I dosed some copepods from some copepod cellar and it all went away magically. Um, this can happen, like, you know, coincidence happened correlation happens and sometimes maybe it is a result of adding that copepod. Maybe you didn't have that specific strain of copepod in the tank that was willing and able to eat those diatoms or dinoflagellates. Uh, but more likely is that it was a coincidence that the algae went away and not a direct result of adding the copepods. And for people who say, oh, I added copepods to my tank and now I have a ton of copepods. Um, we need to talk a little more about the reproductive cycle of copepods. You see, copepods go through booms and busts 
based on their fecundity, they produce a lot of eggs all at once. So the population size doesn't stay stable until the tank is very mature. And so what you have is, you know, on a new tank with no copepods, you put some copepods in there, whether you buy them from a bottle or you just buy a frag from a fish store that is gonna have copepods in the tank. And the population rises really quickly and then they exhaust all their food options and then it plummets and then it goes up again and then it plummets and it goes up again and it plummets and over time this line is becoming more stable and the uh, peaks and valleys are getting closer together and eventually you're going to reach something that's fairly stable but that takes a lot of time and all because you see a big bloom of copepods in the aquarium doesn't mean that it's going to be like that forever in fact it's probably not the carrying capacity of your tank is probably significantly lower than the booms. Copepods are a great way to make money in this hobby. I mean, if you can produce them at volume, it's incredibly profitable. I was raising copepods in high school and selling them on eBay and a local hobbyist. And um, eventually I just got to a point where I was realizing that, you know, this was an incredibly easy thing for me to do. The copepods practically raise themselves. And um, I felt weird about making money off of something that people probably already had in their tank. And for some reason, they thought it was a solution to the problems that they were having in their tank when likely they were just wasting their money on it. Every year, it seems, there's a new thing or a new method that's supposed to solve all of the issues that we've been having thus far with aquarium keeping. And the reality is that these aquariums are far more nuanced and complicated than we often give them credit for, and that these, you know, simple solutions aren't the panacea that we hope that they would be. Our feeling on this issue is that it's probably a lack of diversity that's contributing to the majority of diatoms and dinoflagellates that are occurring in people's tanks. And we've been collecting data on aquariums that we've encountered with this algae that we've been able to remedy it in. Uh, so we'll be putting out a video that kind of touches on the complexities and nuances uh, of these algaes and of aquarium ecology generally. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe. You can hit the bell too. And here's a nature clip.